Building a real life NLP application means you have to perform various steps right from data acquisition, data cleaning to all the way till model building, deployment and monitoring. All these steps combined are called NLP pipeline. In this video, I'm going to take a real life use case and explain you the NLP pipeline. Make sure you watch till the end. The example I'm going to use is Camtasia support ticket system. So Camtasia is a video recording software that I use for my videos and they have this support system where when people find issues with this software, they report here and they create a ticket. Ticketing system is a very common use case in different industry use cases. And one of the challenge with tickets is, see so many people are creating these tickets. Now, how do they know which ticket is very high priority? So you can manually tag that and manually look at all the tickets and the urgent ones you can address initially, or you can have an NLP system which can analyze the text. And just by looking at the text, it can tell you if the ticket is high priority or not. So let's say if you can create a machine learning model, which can look at the title and the description of the ticket, and it can tell you if it's high, medium or a low priority. And if it's a high priority, you can have, you know, a tool like Sentry, which can monitor the logs and create alarms. And it can send a call to customer support system or customer care center where someone can immediately address that query. If the ticket is low priority, maybe you can create a Jira ticket or whatever tool the engineering team in Camtasia is using to create the ticket so that it doesn't require immediate attention, but it can be looked on at some point in time. So now this particular module on Camtasia's website, let's call it ticket management system. It is created by some team in Camtasia. Camtasia, you know, it's a software owned by TechSmith and TechSmith company will have some software team which has created this ticket management system. And they might be storing all the support ticket data in some database. Let's say that database is MongoDB. It could be MySQL or it could be no SQL database such as MongoDB. And these database will have all the ticket records. So I have shown two different tickets here in JSON format. This is a popular JSON format where you can have different fields of the ticket such as ticket description, creator, here it is creator, timestamp, you know, TS means timestamp. And you can have all these records in MongoDB and also watch this green field, CVRD. So let's say Camtasia has been running for five, seven years, and we have already 10,000 tickets in our system. That's like historical data that we already have. Now someone would have tagged those tickets as high or low or medium priority. So we have, let's assume we have those labels. So this severity high, low means we have the training data set that tells you if the description is something like this, then it's a high, high priority ticket. Sometimes you might not have these tags and you might have to hire human annotators to kind of go over the tickets and tag them as a high, low or medium priority. But for simplicity, we are assuming we have all this information. Now what happens is in TechSmith company, there is an AI team or NLP team or data science team. You can call it anything. And let's say this AI team wants to build this particular model that I showed you here. And in order to build this model, they need all this training data. So they will go to ticket management software team and say, Hey, can you give me access of your MongoDB? And ticket management system might be like, we don't want to give you a direct access of our database. Maybe we can upload all our data to some cloud location, let's say some Amazon S3 bucket. S3 is a, like a secure object store on cloud. And we can push all the records there. And maybe from there, you can consume that information and build your model. 
sometimes people build data warehouse also okay so that their mission critical database is not impacted and this step is called data acquisition so data acquisition is a first step in nlp pipeline that is performed by nlp team and the idea here is to get necessary data required to solve a given nlp problem now here i gave a very simple example sometimes when you build an nlp team you don't have training data set available in that case you can use some external database some public data set there are so many public data sets available on the internet or you can do uh, something called product intervention and in the product build necessary instrument in instrumentation so that it keeps on collecting the data i have this practical nlp book this tutorial is based on some of the content of this book and this book has given a lot of examples on how one can collect the data so maybe i can quickly go over some of those examples here so that you get a good idea so see some of the ways that you can collect data is first is use a public data set such as you know like google has a search engine for data sets uh, or some of the public like us consensus bureau website has lot of economic data you can also use a uh, scrapping web scrapping and scrape the internet to collect the data that you need basically you go to internet write some python script which can do web scrapping you can use product intervention you can use data augmentation there are a lot of techniques available in data augmentation where let's say you have 10 samples out of 10 samples you can create 100 samples okay so that's step number 1 which is data acquisition after let's say nlp team now got the data from s3 bucket it's just a cloud location you know no rocket science cloud location where you have all the records for existing tickets let's say in past kemtrize has created 5000 support tickets along with labels which is high low medium severity all those 5000 tickets data is available on this cloud location now i'm looking at one record for one such ticket and what i can do in this particular record is this so i can do some i can just discard some irrelevant information for example creator create a timestamp it's not like this ticket is created by vladimir putin that's why i'm going to give it a high priority no so creator creator timestamp not not needed you know this information is useless you discard that title and description is something you can merge because in the end you look at the words you know such as kemtrize is crashing for example that's a very high priority ticket or uh, the software fails to render the video so these terms could be present either in title or description so it doesn't matter you can just combine both of these and create a one single text okay and that's called discarded discarding irrelevant irrelevant information and kind of creating a simple version of your tax data the second step you can do is spelling mistakes when people enter ticket support ticket they might make you know fat fingering so here in this case instead of crash c r a s h they are saying c r a s so you can do maybe spelling correction here you can also remove extra slash and slash and is like the new line breaks right so here you see there are two slash and so maybe you can remove them so spelling correction removing those things you know extra line breaks all of these things combinedly are called text extraction and clean up so the data that you got was very raw it has lot of extra information you retrieved only useful information out of it and then you did some cleaning on top of it okay so these are the first two steps in nlp pipeline 
now you have this particular text in order to build nlp model you have to split this into separate sentences okay so one way to do this is you know like dot dot or question mark that's the end of the statement so you can split it into uh, three different statements and this process is called sentence segmentation or sentence tokenization now you will be like what's the big deal about sentence segmentation all you do is look at the dots and question mark and you split the sen sentences but look at this statement dr strange likes samosa and ravioli so that his brain works fast now notice dot after doctor and after etc there is a dot so if you just use that dot rule you will end up creating three sentences so you see splitting sentences is not just straightforward you have to incorporate a lot of rules of the grammar or a specific language to build a good sentence splitter you know or sentence tokenizer and the libraries like nltk and spacey has this kind of ready made tokenizer that you can use and in the future video we will write code and we'll look into it how those tokenizers works and once you have created separate sentences the next step would be to create separate words you know and that process is called word tokenization because once you create separate words then you can create a machine learning model and build your nlp application eventually so that's word tokenization or sometimes people just call it tokenization now let's say i have from the big text blurb i created sentences from sentences i created individual words now i need to do some further processing and you know do you think it will make sense that i map this word eating to its base word eat or the word loves to its base word love because that way if someone is saying eating eats ate if you can map it to its base word then it will help you in the uh, model building process and we'll see in the future how exactly this is helping and this step of removing for example from eating i removed ing so i can use some simple rules that if you have ing remove it okay that kind of rule i can use and that process is called stemming so stemming is basically using some fixed rules to try to come up with a base word but stemming might not be enough cuz see here watch this word eight eight i expect it to map it to eat but it's not doing that because stemming doesn't know grammar it's just based on some simple rules so then you can use a process called lemmatization lemmatization means you are mapping that word to a, its base word so eight is a past tense of eat so you are using lemmatization to come up with that word so you see you did two phase process here stemming and lemmatization and that gives you the base words for each of your original word and here is another diagram from the same book that i was referring to the book link is in video description below if you want to order it and read it it has a lot of useful information but this shows some examples of stemming and lemmatization you see lemmatization if you have better it will map it to good meeting it will map to meeting of course there is no base word here but stemming just uses simple rule like if you have able it will remove a b l e if you have formality it will say formal see sometimes it might mess up some words like airline airlin airliner airlin doesn't make sense but it still works in practice so this summarizes the whole process you had a big text blurb you created sentence you created words and then you use stemming and lemmatization to come up with the base word this whole process is called pre processing okay so what we saw is 
data acquisition, text extraction, and pre-processing. These are the first three steps in NLP pipeline so far. Now, you got all these base words. What do you do? See, you are trying to create, again, what is our end goal? End goal is to create an, a classifier that can take the text of support ticket and it can tell me if it's a high priority ticket or not or low priority, etc. Now I got all these words. Machine learning models do not understand text. They always ask for numbers. So what you can do is you can use some formula, some technique so that you can convert these words into numbers. Now, what kind of numbers? Again, we'll see that in the future, but some meaningful representation of these words such that similar words, you know, like feeling better versus feeling good. These words will have similar number representation. Then my model can work better. And, and, and this process of converting words into number is called feature engineering. Feature engineering is you are extracting features from that word. If you have a word good and well, then there are certain features, you know, if you have, let's say a cricket player name, Dhoni versus whatever, Dhoni versus let's say Ricky Ponting or Shane Vaughan, he died recently, unfortunately. These, if you want to represent these words or person in, in a vector, you can have different features such as, okay, is this a sports player, one or zero? Is this a human, one or zero? Because if I have, you know, if I have a bottle, bottle is not a human. So you can have this kind of features and this feature vector can represent that word in an appropriate way. And that technique of extracting features is called feature engineering. And there are various popular techniques. I'm just going to throw different jargons. Don't worry. TF-IDF factorizers, one hot encoding, word embedding. We'll cover all of that in the future videos. But just for now, just assume there are some good ways of converting words into numbers so that these numbers present this word in an accurate way. Okay, so, so far we have seen these four steps. Once you have done feature engineering, your next step will be to build machine learning model. Not all NLP applications require machine learning model, but the one that we are talking about support ticket classification using machine learning might be useful here. So go to YouTube, search code basics, machine learning, you'll find my tutorial playlist. And in this playlist, there are various classification techniques such as decision tree, see, support vector machine, random forest. All of these are various classification techniques, naive base. So it's, it will be useful if you go through this ML playlist, it's going to help you. All these classification techniques can be used for our problem. So let's say for our problem, we end up using naive base. So you had support ticket text, you somehow converted it into numbers for now. Don't, don't worry how we convert it into numbers, but machine learning model helps, understands numbers. That's why we converted it into numbers. And then we use naive base classifier, let's say, or SVM or any other classifier and we can do classification. So if you have 5,000 support ticket data in the past, along with the labels, now we can train this model with that data and in the future when the new ticket comes up when you feed it to this model it will tell you whether it's a high priority or low priority so that was model building now as i said you can use different techniques svm random forest and within specific technique also there are hyper parameters there are different parameters like cogwheels that you can tune and to figure out which model is the best model, you can use a technique called grid search CV. Again, go to YouTube. I have a video on this. You can watch that. But these kind of techniques allow you to choose 
the best model for your given problem because model building is short of like trial and error you have to try a lot of things and eventually something works you know okay now when you are evaluating your model you can use something called confusion matrix so in confusion matrix on the x axis you have truth this is truth and this is prediction so let's say i built a model after that i started predicting and when i do the prediction i can then compare it with the truth and i can figure out how good my model is so let's say in this test there were 10 tickets which was actually high priority and my model predicted it to be high so anything on this diagonal is i got the right prediction so there were eight tickets which were medium priority and my model predicted it to be medium but look at this too so there was two two tickets which was actually low priority but my model said it's a high priority so anything that is not in this diagonal is your wrong prediction okay so you can by looking at confusion matrix you can you can figure out how confused your model is <laughs> it's like if your model is not confused and very accurate then you see all the numbers in the diagonal and everywhere else you will see zero in this particular case 2 and 1 3 it made total three wrong prediction and when you are building machine learning model you can use different metric like accuracy precision recall f1 score to figure out uh, if the model is good or not if you want to know precision recall f1 score etc let me suggest you a so if you go to youtube and if you search for code basics f1 score you'll find a video this video will give you a very good simple explanation of precision recall and so on okay so we build a model we evaluate it using grid search cv confusion matrix and if things don't look good we again we kind of go in a loop you know this dotted line shows you might have to do revisions you might have to do again pre processing feature engineering model building you keep on trying iteration until you find a perfect model for your problem i mean there is no perfect model but a model that performs better than others once a model is built you can export it to a file and deploy it on the cloud azure google cloud anything aws you can write a fast api based or fast text service around not fast a fast api or flask service around that model so there is a model and you can write a rest service you know the http the service that can re request as saw to http request you can build that service and you can deploy that service in the cloud you can also deploy it to an end to end ml platform such as databricks amazon sage maker azure machine learning h2.ai these are like end to end machine learning platforms that you can use Uh, to build and deploy these services and once the service is deployed of course you do you do need to monitor and update it periodically when you deploy it in production when it starts serving request you have to set up some kind of monitoring system so that you know because sometimes in the dev things work okay but when you deploy to production when the model goes in wild maybe it doesn't perform as good so having a good monitoring and update system make sure that you know the mo model is not doing wrong prediction and you're not losing on your business and there is a dotted line here again means if the model is not performing well there are n number of reason let's say there is a drift in the concept we build a model on specific terminology now Let's say Cambridge they added a bunch of new features, and the way people talk kind of changed. You have to now get more training data and kind of repeat the whole process, right from data acquisition to model building. Okay, so 
understand that in the industry when you're working on NLP application it's not like you build a model deployed and done it's continuous iterative process a lot of grunt work that goes into building NLP system this particular conversation gave you an idea on specific use case which was you know Camtasia support system but there are many other use cases where all these more steps that you perform will have some changes okay and we'll talk about those in the future as well but I would again suggest that you read this book that book has given description of various steps in a much detailed fashion I hope you like this video if you did please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends the entire NLP playlist link is in a video description below